Hi everybody. Um, in this video, we're going to uh, produce a vertical section through uh, your first flight of stairs um, uh, on an 8x4 sheet of plywood. So it's a good introduction for someone who's never been to stairs before and it'll provide a good foundation going forward into the more complex design of stairs. So um, the process of drawing this vertical section will give you a better understanding of the various details that you will need to be aware of when setting out a flight of stairs. And uh, it will also uh, make you aware of the various regulations relative to stair design. Uh, we'll be going through some of them here. Uh, this animation will go through the process that will deliver this vertical section through a straight flight of stairs as well as the construction detail. Uh, this will give you a good basic understanding of setting out a straight flight of stairs before you progress onto the more complex uh, stair designs that you are going to encounter. Um, so here we are, we uh, have an 8x4 sheet coming into the view here and we're just sliding it up so you can just see the end of the sheet. So typically I'd start this on a bench. So um, to start with we're actually going to draw in the uh, trimmer joist that the stairs will be resting against. So. Um, Basically, if you measure up from the end of your sheet, which is kind of going to pick, give you a position there, 722 millimeters uh, to the top of the joist itself. And just come in 100 millimeter and draw in your typical 9x3 uh, trimmer joist with the X drawn in it there and broken line. And um, that'll, give, that'll be, as I said, where your stairs are going to rest against. Um, down at the bottom edge of the sheet, I'm just emphasizing that that will now represent uh, the, uh, the uh, finish floor level at ground floor level. So that's that's your ground floor level drawn, just to animate there in pink. Uh, to establish the next floor level up, don't forget to add on the finished floor. In this case, we're drawn in a tongue and groove floorboard. So that is our finished floor level. Don't make the mistake of taking the top of the joist as the finished floor level. And uh, so uh, the next thing you're going to get is what's called a story rod, which is uh, basically a two by one lash, really, uh, or three by one, and just rest that on the ground and. Um, you're going to mark where the um, where in line with the top of the floorboard as it were there. So your that's your total rise uh, from one floor level to the next floor level, and of course that'll have to be divided up into steps. And to figure out how many steps we will be requiring, the best thing to do is divided by the that that story rod the, between the two floor levels divided by the maximum. A rise we can have for each step which is 220 millimeters and of course when you do that you're not going to come out with an even figure unless you're extremely lucky so the whatever answer you get you're going to round that up uh, to the next whole number and um, you'll soon see here with the example um, coming up that in our case here uh, it's going to be three point something uh, steps, but obviously we can't have three steps one side and one step smaller. So obviously we'll have to go up to the next whole number. So as you can see here, our answer in that scenario was 3.38. And of course, what we'll do is we'll round that up to four and redivide the total height from floor level to the next floor level again. And that will give us a four even step rises then, each of them being 186 millimeters. So um, now that we've established what our rise is, the next thing we need to put with the rise um, uh, that will um, be on a level plane, as it were, is the what's called the going distance, which is square off the rise distance. And um, uh, I haven't first marked the, all the rises here on our story rod, as you can see animated there, and we'll just uh, slide that over to the left there now shortly. Uh, we're going to check to see that if we put um, the uh, minimum um, going we can have, which is 220 millimeters, and if we put that with our rise of 186, will the pitch of our stairs go beyond what's, uh, what would put us in breach, in other words, of what the building regulations, uh, in this case, uh, for our private stairs, we cannot go beyond 42 degrees pitch. So um, there is a formula. Uh, if we use the formula the step rise divided by the going and uh, whatever answer we get we just hit the shift button on our scientific calculator hit 10 hit the equal sign and that will give you the pitch so in our case here um uh, when we when we um, when we apply that formula 
um, uh, our answer um, will 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 show that we are indeed uh, within uh, below that maximum of 42 degrees so we are compliant with uh, that regulation so our pitch here uh, after applying that formula will be uh, 40.21 degrees so if you've applied the formula correctly yourself that's the answer you come up with on your scientific calculator or if you're using scientific calculator on your mobile phone and um, so um, once we have that established uh, the next thing we have to check with before we move on is there's another formula called twice the rise plus the going has to come between 550 and 700 millimeters so double double the rise plus one going distance has to be between 550 and 700 which it is so now that we've established that we can use that going distance with the rise and be compliant with all the regulations the next thing we'll do is measure the required number of goings along that uh, floor line that's just been animated there and in this case we did three goings because if you have four rises it's usually one less in terms of the amount of goings so as i said because we have four rises it means we're going to have three goings and here they're just animated in down onto the grid work to form a, a grid shape of your basic step outline so um here you can see it shaded in blue just to emphasize it to you there's your all your steps now um formed uh uh, using the going combined with rise grid work shall we say and um, i'm just animating in in this the shape of the steps and you'll notice that the face of the riser and the face of the tread never go out beyond those uh, that grid line uh, that i showed you so in other words the the going line is in line with the top face of the tread and the rise line is in line with the front face of the riser in other words the surfaces that's going to get varnished are on the same rise and going line so the next thing we're establishing here is the bottom of the string and the top of the string was just passed there on the animation just chain up the bottom corners of the riser basically and then measure the width of your string to get the top line then draw in a center line in line with the first and last riser and that's the center line of your new posts so then basically just add in the thickness of your new post then after that So here we're going to um, just draw in the tenons and as you can see the tenons are divided into three thirds with the central third being um, cut out as a haunch and um, uh, we've left uh, the bottom haunch there uh, up an inch or so. Um, the top is a similar scenario where it's again it's the tenon is divided into three thirds the center third being taken out as a haunch and that I've drawn that in halfway in on the null post that, that tenon. Um, so um, the next uh, item animated here is the um, the channel that's screwed to the top of the string to receive the balusters or spindles maybe and um, that's housed out uh, to take in the thickness of the balusters or spindles and uh, i just drew a section here section aa through that just to show you the housing that i'm talking about so that's in about 10 mil that housing the depth of it the piece of timber itself is about 62, 65 by 22 and um, that'll have a, a slip uh, shown in green there outlined in green uh, in between the balusters so um, and that's that slip is usually slightly proud of the housing so you're breaking the giant as it were rather than showing a, a line that it'd be just like a, um, a crack line which you wouldn't want you know um, here i'm emphasizing that with regards to regulations then the other thing you have to be aware of there's the thing, there's a, a, a part of the stairs called a, a nosing line so basically if you just left a lat on top uh, that's, that's that's resting on the nosings of each of the steps and measure up off that uh measure up from that the, the minimum you must have to the top of your handrail is 900 millimeters uh, and um where it regards um, headroom uh, you need a minimum of um, two meters measured vertically off that nosing line and uh, also then uh, measured off that nosing line square off that nosing line then uh, you must also have a distance of uh, 1.5 meters measured square off as just as animated there so bear those um, regulations in mind as well uh, when you're uh, designing or laying out your stairs so um, 
So that's that's it on the regulation end of it there. So um, next thing we'll need to do is to um, calculate the uh, number of balusters or spindles we're going to need for the stairs. So um, if you take the horizontal distance between the newel posts, uh, minus 100 mil, and then divide it by uh, the balluster thickness combined with, uh, or plus 100 millimeter, um, and then round up your answer to the next whole number to get the number of balusters. So I have it all printed out there. Um, if you want to pause the video just to study it for a little while and that will tell you the number of balusters and after that then you'll be able to calculate uh, the number of um, how what space to put between the balusters or our spindles and again uh, you can uh, just take the horizontal distance between the newer posts minus the baluster thickness multiplied by the number of balusters being used and then divide your answer by the number of balusters required plus one and then the answer will give you the daylight distance between each baluster so when you're chopping those um, slips or spacers between the uh, that fits into the channel now when you go to your chop saw you know what length to chop um, so um, the next detail coming up here is the handrail uh, and again that has a housing on on the underside of it similar to the channel uh, to receive the the, the balusters and um, again it's the, the depth of the housing is about 10 millimeters deep and I just zoom in here just to um, again I'm just going to draw a section to the handrail just to emphasize the detail on the housing there so you can see the housing there and um, you can see that um, uh, you'll see a slip coming into that housing now again that's the space or slips or uh, between the between the the uh, balusters on, on your stairs and uh, of course it's the same detail going around the landing as well you know and um, so it's coming in in green here now the uh, space or slip between the uh, balusters outlined in green so uh, that's that gives you uh, that section bb there gives you a good uh, detail on what's happening there now the shape of the handrail itself can vary so but it has to be ergonomic so your hand doesn't slip off it easily so the other thing to bear in mind is that whatever space you have between the spindles, a sphere of 100 millimeters should not fit between the spindles or the balusters. So always double check uh, before you progress uh, to make sure that's not the case. And the reason that for that is so the child's head won't go between the uh, balusters. So um, we're going to just slide across the end of the sheet here now and we're going to uh, focus on just drawing in the wedges uh, that's underneath the tread and at the back of the riser. So here I've drawn a wedge that I've made out of um, uh, a thin piece of uh, hardboard or cardboard. It's basically 12 inches long, a quarter inch maybe at one end and approximately an inch the other end. That would give you about the right taper and uh, there they are in green and they are housed in a half inch into the string as well as the treads and risers being housed in a half an inch so will these wedges and um, uh, so uh, the next thing you'll see animated in here now is the riser wedges driven in and as i said already uh, they are also housed in a half inch deep into the string so they're in at the back of the riser and as you drive them up they're pushing out and they're tightening the uh, riser uh, into the string you'll also be putting in glue blocks there's about three of them usually on the underside of the step from this perspective we'll just see one but there's one close to either end and one in the center we'll say so um that's it basically now you've completed the vertical section through the stairs you, you should have a deeper understanding of the uh, construction and detail and setting out of a flight of stairs and the relative um, regulations so um you have uh, basically uh, you have a good uh, you have a good foundation now going forward and especially if you um, carry on and uh, go and make that stairs uh, then of course there's a lot of learning with regards to using routers and using tinners etc if you're lucky enough to have a tinner and use the spindle molders uh, of course if you're an apprentice you need to be strictly supervised when using all those power tools and machines and hand tools so just be uh, be careful uh, but uh, enjoy it all right